Welcome back, folks, for a new episode of RFL Rapid Fire Elite. And today we'll cover all the low tier Swedish designed tank destroyers that are coming in patch 9.17. So, this leak episode is going to be a little bit more jam packed than the actual leak episode, and we're not going to go into that much details about each and every one of these vehicles. So, it's low tier vehicles, a lot of people skip them with free XP, so kind of disappointing but it's the fact of low tiers so they are interesting vehicles but a lot of people just skip them because they want to get to the tier 10s so we're going to take a look at the tier 2 to the tier 5 so four new vehicles added to the TD branch for the Swedes so at tier 2 we have the PV LVV FM42 the Panzer Varns Love Varns Vaughn so it's basically a mini SPG designed to counter tanks as well as aircrafts. It was meant to carry a 20mm autocannon or a 37mm Bofors main gun. It was only a prototype. There wasn't actual a name for this vehicle, so it's mostly a tankette, if you will, but it's a small little vehicle. And here you can see that it's basically a gun shield mounted on a L60 chassis of a sort, or early prototypes of the L60 chassis. So that's pretty much it, but yeah, small vehicle, only 18mm of armor at the best. So it's a tier 2, you'll do whatever. <laughs> so here are the main stats of this vehicle. But as you can see, the good parts are the gun arc. So 60 degrees of gun arc, that's pretty wide. That's about the Scorpion, the M56 Scorpion. And yeah, that's a great gun arc to shoot a lot of targets without moving the hull. Has great camo too. Not that crazy, but still pretty good. About the same as the Hellcat. So horsepower per ton ratio is pretty high. About 27. Top speed is pretty fast as well. Traverse is also good. So you could play this thing like a medium tank. But accuracy is not that great. And dispersion is also not that great. So get pretty close if you want to hit. But it's a tier 2. View range is low, health is low, but it's a tank destroyer. The guns are right, in my honest opinion, because 55mm of penetration. That's okay. If you can penetrate 40mm of armor, or about 50mm of armor for the French light tanks, then you're good. But it's only up to tier 3 for the matchmaking, so don't expect too much. It's a tier 2. So overall rating, 3 out of 5. Average. You could play it like a medium, but it's relatively fast, so... It's okay, average. At tier 3, we have the IKV-72. So basically a STRV M42 designed as a tank destroyer. So in layman's term, it's a M42 TD. But it has a derp gun. It could mount a uh, 105 or it mounted a 84. Has 20 degrees of gun depression in real life. So it could be interesting in the game. But here are the actual models of this tank so as you can see open top so the gun depression should be amazing but it has no armor only 19 millimeter of armor at the best so don't get hit don't ram stuff too it doesn't weigh much weighs about <laughs> eight tons wow but it has an 84 millimeter which has a lot of alpha for a tier three it can't one shot itself so <laughs> The penetration is not that great, about 80mm of penetration. I mean, it's alright, but it can one-shot itself. Also, it's pretty fast in terms of horsepower per turn ratio, top speed, and terrain resistance. So you could actually go shotgunning with this vehicle, surprisingly. And it's now the best in camouflage rating. The original best is the 47 point something for the... UE57. So this will have the best camouflage out of all the vehicles in the game. So yeah, it's a sneaky shotgunning vehicle. Just use the high explosive anti tank. <laughs> you troll people. <laughs> That's just me, man. <laughs> you can't be in a corner with a high explosive anti tank that could go through all tier fours. So, it, well, it also faced tier fives. Oh. But yeah, it should be fine. Eh, 170 against tier 5s. 
will be a problem, but this vehicle is funny. It's super hilarious to play if you're top tier and you're just going shotgunning like Panzer 1Cs. However, you have no armor and Panzer 1Cs will chew you to death. So, still camp, but eh, 3.5 out of 5, it's alright. Surprise shotgun will surprise a lot of people. At tier 4, we have the SAV M43. So this vehicle is basically, in uh, layman's terms, the Swedish version of a Hetzer. It was based off the Lech Panzer 38T, so the Panzer Kampfwagen 38T, the Lech Tank Vizor 38. So based on the same suspension and chassis, and they just mounted their own superstructure. So this was the Swedish Hetzer, chubby Hetzer. Still has some armor, but yeah, you already know what this vehicle is all about. So here are the collision models. It actually has 60 millimeter of frontal armor. Now it's not as well sloped as the Hetzer's upper plate. So do not expect to bounce a lot more shots than the Hetzer, but it still has the derp gun and you could mount a long barrel 75. So it's a Swedish Hetzer. All right, so here are the main stats of this vehicle. So you have a derp gun, that's for the lulls. Pretty good DPM <laughs> if you manage to penetrate, but you could just use the high explosive for the lulls or the AP, but high explosive. Horsepower per time ratio is not that great, but you do have some armor at the front, 50 millimeter to about 60 at the front. So yeah, it's a derp gun. Accuracy is not that great. Aim time is also not that great, but you do have 14 degrees of gun depression and 35 for the gun arc so you could actually go haul down and a little bit better at camping than the Hetzer because the Hetzer doesn't have the gun depression so you do have a lot more camo I don't know it's still pretty good camo I don't know if it's better than the Hetzer but that's still pretty sneaky and that terrain resistance is good but to counterbalance it's not that fast, only 13 horsepower per ton ratio and 43 kilometers per hour top speed with pretty decent health. So just camp, the usual, but eh, three and a half out of five, chubby Hetzer. Mm, it's all right, it's interesting, but not that crazy. The mil one, to get a perspective, the mil one would be a 4.5 or five out of five. Same goes for the UDE SO3. Whereas this vehicle is like 3.5, the Cranbon on my scale would be like 2.5 or 2. So it's still pretty alright, average. So here is the tier 5, the IKV 103. It's an upgrade to the IKV 72. So mounted a better armor, slightly with better suspension, better engine, and changed the armament around. So upgrades all around, but it still has no armor whatsoever. So. <laughs> but here are the collision models of this tank destroyer. So it's a flat vehicle. So it should have about the same camouflage rating as the IKV 72, but armor wise, only 25 at the front. So slightly a little bit more armor, but not that much, like seven. So don't get hit. But here are the main stats of the 103. So. <laughs> The standard shell is high explosive anti-tank. That's funny. I mean, high explosive anti-tank does not lose any penetration values across distance. So it will always be 120 millimeters of pin, but it does not get normalizations like AP shells or APCR. So does not have the benefits of normalization to help you overmatch the armor, but it's all the same penetration from whichever distance so is that worth it i mean this is the first vehicle i believe to use high explosive anti-tank as the default ammo other tanks could have the apcr but this is the first high explosive anti-tank the amx 30b should have a high explosive anti-tank shell the 105 for the 105 millimeter but does not so oh well but the gold shell is also 140 so penetration wise it's all right for a tier 5 td but not that great so you should be looking around 150 millimeters of pin for a tier 5 td but you will face tier 7s so 
120 for tier 7s, yeah, that will be a problem. And you don't have the normalization to go through a lot of the armor. But you do have the camo and the view range and the gun depression to go camping a lot. So just go camp. It is relatively fast too. So about 20 horsepower per ton ratio. Top speed is good and terrain resistance is good. So go shotgunning like the IKV-72. <laughs> Oh no, don't do that. I mean, you uh, 300 alpha is also pretty good, but it will take you more than two hits to kill tier 7s, obviously, or tier 6s, or even tier 5s. So, yeah. It's fast, but health is below average, and traverse is not that great. So, you can run fast in a straight line, but turning a corner is a little bit more difficult and the shell is slow and DPM is low for this vehicle so 3 out of 5 for me but nice meme <laughs> nice high explosive anti-tank for the default ammo Ugh. but overall for the Swedish TD line you have a decent tier 2 alright IKV-72 is pretty fun if you can go shotgunning if you're top tier SAV M43 that's the Swedish Hetzer, so it's the same as the Hetzer, it's average, it's pretty good, so it's alright. IKV-103 is the shotgun for tier 5 now, with high explosive anti-tank, so bleh, it's alright. But you have the 65 alternate number 2, with the high penetration, 90mm, so dramatic switch or shift in tone from low tiers to middle tiers and high tiers. So it focuses a lot more on the camping aspects as well as the accuracy and penetration, whereas early tiers have derp guns. <laughs> so yeah, the changing tone is so dramatic from tier 5 to tier 6. It's crazy, but tier 6 is amazing in my honest opinion. It's like a 4.5 or 4 to me. Tier 7, the IKV-90 Type B, that's the matchbox, that's the flat FE-304. That's also pretty good with the burst damage of the autoloader. So that's a 4.5 for me or 4. The UDE SO3 got recently nerfed but still pretty good. So still a 4 or 4.5. And the STRV 103s are, you know, the new models, the new guys, or the uh, new freshness. Whatever the, I forgot the term for it. So the new hotness or whatever. So that's a. New stuff on the block. God, I can't even think of a term. <laughs> but that's the crazy stuff. So, early tiers are kind of a slog fest. You have to get through some of the derpy mechanics of the early tiers to get to the high penetration, high accuracy of the later tiers. So overall, it's still a pretty interesting T, uh, TD line. So, I would recommend it, but you may be facing some of the problems with the lower tiers than the higher tiers, and a lot of the people may have trouble with the new mechanics for the hydropneumatic suspension. But in general, it's a pretty decent line, and you will probably keep around 5 to 6 of the vehicles in this TD line. So I probably will keep the 65 alternate number 2, the 90 Type B, the UDS and STRVs, uh, 103s. So I'll probably keep like top 5 of the whole branch so that's actually pretty good out of the whole entire tech tree so it's pretty worthwhile so there you go folks the low tier swedish tank destroyers coming soon now the test server was delayed by a day so it should be up tomorrow that's november 18th that's the rumor but it was meant to be live today i waited all day long but nope so burst my bubble but i'll finish the low tier swedish hybrid line with the light tanks and the mediums coming right up after this video so stay tuned but thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you guys next time peace